Hello guys and welcome to the next video. So today it's finally time for the long promised video where I show you my whole collection. Um, the video will probably be pretty long so you better get some snacks. And yeah, so as I said I will show you every single thing that I have that's uh, Yu-Gi-Oh related. And I guess I'll start out with showing you my book and comments. You can already see the first box right here and I have uh, more boxes around here. I'm trying to make that quick since most people are probably not very interested in comments. After that I will show you my uh, binders with all the single cards that I have from the different sets. And last but not least I will tell you, uh, show you my sealed stuff. And for the impatient people I will put some um, timestamps in the description if I remember um, where you can find what so you can just uh, jump ahead and watch whatever you want to watch. But without further ado let's uh, go ahead and jump into this. So this is my first uh, box with comments. You can get these um, paper boxes online for pretty cheap, they're like $5 or something like that. And um, yeah, you can just store in like I think 5,000 cards or something like that. And I kind of sorted these, so if we go down here in the corner there is some um, starter deck cards. So all these cards down here are starter deck cards, right? You can see that. And then I put like little paper dividers in between and then after the starter decks there is like starter deck evolutions. Then there is some um, comments from starter deck. Uh, what are these called? Structure decks. So these are like all structure deck cards right here. As you can see they're a little bit newer. And then there comes the sets. So um, we have like blue eyes cards right here. And uh, most of these cards are not very valuable. There are some first edition ones in here but um, mostly not the ones that I pulled from any booster boxes or whatever. These are just cards that are not, uh, yeah, as I said, very valuable. And we have Metal Raiders up here, a um, lot of spell ruler cards down here. Again, they're not sorted or anything, they're only sorted by set. Um, I don't sell these or something, they're just sitting in my closet and don't really know what to do with them. But I don't want to throw them away either. And we have um, Pharaoh's Servant up here is Labyrinth of Nightmare. Down here I believe, yeah, it's Legacy of Darkness. As you can see I also put um, rare cards in there since rare cards are oftentimes not more valuable than any common. We have uh, Pharaoh's Servant, up here is Magician's Force, then there comes um, Dark Crisis, up here is Invasion of Chaos. Check a few of these, yeah. You can see um, these are first edition right here, but again they're not uh, like super valuable. And they're also not really getting damaged in here since I'm barely um, opening these boxes. And over on the right side these are mostly um, GX packs, uh, like your solved dual list, rise of destiny and so on. Um, I did not really bother to open or to uh, sort all the other GX cards that I have, so these are obviously not all. Um, but I sorted these cards before I opened the GX boxes on my um, channel, so um, most of the GX cards that I own are not in this box. But yeah, I guess that's it mostly for this box. Um, over here we have some Dark Beginning and Dark Revelation, so these are Dark Beginning 2 and I believe um, that's Dark Beginning 1 and then up here there's like Dark Revelation stuff. Yeah, not very interesting. Just wanted to show you my comments as well since they belong to my collection. So let's put that box away and get the next box. It's pretty much the same again. As I said I um, didn't like sort most of the GX cards so um, the cards you can see in here are all the GX ones that I didn't order. So we have um, Oh, wait, these are not GX cards, these are um, Legendary Collection cards. I opened a whole lot of packs of uh, Legendary Collection Joey's World, so these are in here. Uh, but GX cards should be somewhere around here as well, I guess it's this block then. Yeah, these are all the GX cards that I have and didn't sort, plus some other ones that I have from the random pack openings. So you can see right here, these are LOB cards and then there is an Invasion of Chaos card and a Cyberdog Impact card, so these are mostly um, Cards from the random pack openings that I didn't sort yet. I'm just throwing them in here to get rid of them somehow. And these are all just like random stacks of stuff. Like right here we have some elemental energy that's kind of sorted but not really again. Not very interesting and over here we have uh, some empty top loaders and sleeves that I uh, got over time. For my collection that's um, in the binders I use the same sleeves. And uh, basically if I buy cards and get them sleeves then these are left over since I use different sleeves for my cards and um, these are just sleeves that I get from people when they send me cards. And then one last of these boxes, like right here. Um, this one is a special box, basically 
This box only contains playable cards and we use that for um, like sealed or draft play. So this right here is all trap cards and if I go through them you can see these are all um, playable cards that you can like put in every deck that you play. A lot of duplicates as you can see as well. You have like trap pull, reinforcements and stuff like that. And what we do sometimes is um, we just pull random cards out of here and um, build random decks. So like we pull 60 to 70 cards and then we build a 40 card deck. It's pretty fun. Um, of course there's not only uh, super strong cards in here, there's also um, kind of worse cards. We, uh, in the beginning we only had strong cards in here but uh, it's kind of ridiculous if you have a deck that's only consisting of strong cards. So there's also some random bad ones in here. Same for monsters. Um, if I check here these are all uh, playable monsters. 4 stars or lower. The ritual monsters are in a different stack over here. So you don't, uh, if you draft, uh, you don't want to get only like ritual monsters. Or uh, I'm saying ritual, I mean tribute monsters. So if I go over here, these are all the uh, tribute monsters. Again, there are bad ones and good ones. And yeah, it's just a fun thing to do with your friends to do like random drafts. I do also have some um, empty booster sleeves in here and sometimes we uh, make our own boosters from these cards and then we pass them along and draw cards from the boosters or something like that. And up here there's a little stack with um, fusion and ritual monsters and some XYZ monsters that I still don't really understand how to play. And basically we made some uh, own rules for like fusion and ritual monsters because um, you can't really put these in these stacks right here. So um, we might just make the rule that we put, for example, the ritual cards in the spell card stack. And if you pull a ritual card, then you just get the ritual monster for free. Same like with these cards in front of here. So if you pull like a gadget and you get the other gadgets for free, or if you pull a dragon troop or Exodia piece, you always get the uh, um, cards that belong to them for free. And then there's some more sleeves in here that you can sleeve up or your deck and some playmats because one of my friends does not really know how to play so he gets a playmat with the stones and uh, um, faces. Yeah, so that's that for this box. Let's put it away as well. That's mostly all of my comments. Um, there are some missing uh, that I opened in the last random pack openings. I just put that uh, those in my closet and didn't uh, put them in the boxes yet, but it's not a lot of cards. So then I have an empty legendary decks right here. Um, these are all cards that are worth a little bit more that I once had for sale. Um, so all of these I had for sale once. It's also just some random foils that I'm not interested in or some uh, old first edition cards. Um, I took them off because I was kind of tired of selling these. I sold most of the cards that are worth a little bit more. So um, all the cards that are in here are like $1 cards or maybe $2 cards or something. And if you get like 10 orders for cards that are one dollar or less it's kind of annoying to put out to um, pack all the letters and put the cards in there and send it away and stuff so yeah it's too much effort for me so i put them offline for now and then the last thing for the first part here um it's kind of random but i guess i put it right here um on my NTV booster sleeves basically these are all the uh, um, booster sleeves that are left over from the uh, pack openings that i did on my channel if you didn't uh, see them then go ahead and check them out. Um, as you can see, these are all first edition packs that I opened on my channel. And of course I kept the empty uh, sleeves. A lot of people um, want these and pay even for them, but I'm not really planning to sell them. You will see later that what you can do, I did some things with these uh, sleeves and I want to keep them. And if I go all the way down here, there are some more. And if I show you these right here, Basically, um, as you can see with the Legacy of Darkness pack, it's not a real pack. Um, I just put nine cards into the empty sleeves, so uh, they look like packs. And of course, don't hate me, I'm not trying to sell them or anything. And then with the Ancient Sanctuary right here, I even put some double-sided tape on top so they're sealed again. And my plan for those is, um, I do have a display with packs and open boxes and I want to put these in the open boxes. I mean, I do have actual sealed packs, but I don't really see the point in keeping the sealed packs. Um, so I might as well just open all my packs and then uh, put useless cards in them and kind of tape them off at the top and put the uh, resealed packs into the boxes just for display. I don't really care if it's original packs or resealed packs and I rather um, like open my packs all and put the uh, um, resealed ones in there. As you can see there are a lot of packs right here. I did use some of these leaves and I did give some of them away but uh, the ones that are left over here that I'm going to keep. 
Right, so um, there's going to be a shortcut and then I will be back with the next part. Alright guys, and we're back with the next part. Before I go into my binders and show you my single cards, I actually want to show you um, these posters right here. They are really cool. Basically, um, these are the original promotional posters for um, new sets that came out back in the day. Um, I just got these recently, they look really cool, so um, I want to show them off as well. Um, setting this up took kind of longer than I um, want to admit because these um, posters are stored, rolled up and um, placing them on a flat surface is kind of a struggle. Um, so anyways, um, the first poster right here is for the um, original starter decks. So you can see like um, Yuki and Kaiba on it and of course the uh, Dark Magician and the Blue-Eyes White Dragon. And oh yeah, there we go, you see. And these posters have a really um, like good quality, they are pretty thick and they are like shiny. You cannot really see that in the camera, but um, they look like a foil card actually. They look really, really nice. Yeah, so basically down here you can see like the um, starter decks on the left and the right and the release date and everything. And then up here the um, artwork of course. I'm gonna put these um, aside one by one. Alright then, the next right here is Metal Raiders. Of course you can see the uh, um, Beast Skull Dragon and Yugi again, as on all the posters. Um, this is shiny as well, they actually are um, all shiny, at least the original ones. Um, and again, you can see down here the box and the release date and of course the um, pull ratios at the very bottom. And next up we have like um, Spell Ruler, or Magic Ruler actually. So that was before Magic Wars we named to Spell. Um, you can see a box artwork with Relinquished and down here again the box pull ratios and release date. Oh and yeah, you might have noticed I started with Metal Raiders after the starter decks. I don't have the blue eyes one and I can't find one. I would really love to get one, so I have um, all of these posters, but I just can't find one. Or I better say I can't find one that's being sold. Some people have one, but they don't sell it. If uh, you have one and want to sell it, then uh, please message me on Instagram or leave a comment on the video. I would really love to buy one of these. Anyways, um, next we have Pharaoh's Servant. Um, Again, the box artwork with the Thousand Eyes Restrict and on the bottom we have, um, again, the box and pull ratios and everything. So, that set was released 2002. It's been a pretty long time since then. Next up, um, Labyrinth of Nightmare. Kind of the same deal again. You can see the Mask of Restrict. The guy who was selling this poster um, rolled them the other way, so he's closed like that. Kind of weird. And then next we have Legacy of Darkness and this is like the first one where they changed it and I don't know why. Um, this one looks kind of ugly, I mean it's still in a good quality and well, it's still shiny but um, they didn't put on the box artwork, it's just Yuki for some reason so there's uh, no last turn on this one. And then down here they um, don't show the whole box, they show just one pack but it still has like the pull ratios and uh, well, I guess the release date is missing as well. So that's kind of weird, I don't know why they changed that. And then next up is Pharaoh's Servant, which is the same again. For some reason they changed it up. I really like the first ones uh, way more than these. Um, yeah, it's like uh, missing the Hell Power more from the uh, art. And then down here, again, uh, no box, just a pack. And they even left out the pull ratios from this one. So no release date, no pull ratios. Looks kind of weird. And that's the last one from the original sets I have. I don't know if there is uh, one from like Magician's Force or Dark Crisis. I've never seen any of these, but of course it's possible that they're out there as well. And the last one I have is the Soul of Duelist one here. Um, I don't know if this is actually an original print. I guess so, it looks uh, original, but it's really low quality. I guess they changed something um, during the starting time of GX or something. Um, it's really thin paper and it looks very different. It's not shiny anymore. It's just a usual or a normal poster. Of course down here again, uh, there's the pack and for some reason they printed Master of Oz on here. I don't know why. And it's missing as uh, the release date and the um, pull ratios as well. Yeah, so that's for posters. Um, I'll cut the video again and then I'm back with my binders. Alright guys, and we're back with the binders. Um, I do have like 20 binders uh, here right now, so I probably have to speed this up so I don't... Uh, I won't show these binders in very detail, I'll just flip through them really quickly, because otherwise this video is going to be like 10 hours. Um, I do have a series on my channel where I 
a look at the binders in more detail. I did like LOB up to PSV, I believe. And I do have plans to um, show the other sets as well. I just uh, didn't have time yet. But anyway, I will show you all my cards uh, right now. But I will start with this red binder right here, which is a little special because um, this is basically one thing um, which I use the empty packs for. So you can see right here, I put them in here and it looks just really nice. I mean, there's no real use to it, but um, I really like how this looks. So basically, these are the first edition uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon packs from my box opening. And then I did this with every set that uh, I open it. So there are the first at Battle Riders packs and first at Spellbrother packs. Of course, these uh, packs are open. As I said, they are actually... Um, that's, those are the one I opened on the channel. And uh, if you're wondering how I did this, um, this is why I always opened the packs um, as nicely as possible. So here at the top where the opening is, I just uh, slide it in um, a useless card. You slide it down till it's in the middle and then you just fold the edges around the card and put it in the binder. And first of all, it will look kind of weird, but uh, once the binder um, lays for a while, then it will flatten out and look really, really good. So, um, yeah, Metal Raider Spell Ruler, then here we have Pharaoh's Servant, A Labyrinth of Nightmare, Legacy of Darkness, Fairy Guardian, Magician's Force, and um, Dark Crisis. And here we have the Invasion of Chaos and Ancient Sanctuary, Soul of Duelist, and Rise of Destiny. These look actually um, really similar. Flaming Eternity and the Lost Millennium, the first sets without um, Yugi on the front. And we have Cybernetic Revolution and Elemental Energy. And then Shadow of Infinity and Enemy of Justice. Um, as you know, these are the last um, packs I opened on the channel. And then here are some uh, random ones like um, Dark Beginning 1 and 2, Dark Revelation. These are the first um, Duelist pack that came out. We have an exclusive pack. Tournament packs 4 and 6, I don't have any other ones, but they look all the same anyway. And up here we have um, Duelist Pack Kaiba and Yugi, which are relatively new, and then two Legendary Collection Packs. Over here there's some Duelist Saga, I did open like a box of those, and um, I really like the cover arts, they look really good. And then here's some Battle Pack, the um, original one, which is also a pretty um, cool bo uh, booster set. And that's pretty much it, I do have a, like a sealed God Card thing from Legendary Collection back here, but it's not really uh, anything. All right, then um, on to the next binder. So this one is just like a random binder with cards that uh, don't fit in any other binder that, but uh, I also don't want to store in the um, boxes that you saw earlier. Basically, yeah, just some random stuff. These are from Duelist Pack, some uh, cards. Then we have a Ghost Reaper, whatever he's called. Um, it's one of my favorite cards. And this one is from like the Premium Gold or whatever it's called, I don't know. Um, and it looks really cool. And then here's some uh, more starter deck cards like um, the Dark Magician, Blue Eyes White Dragon, and down here the um, cards from the starter deck Marek. And then here we have some of the cards with the new foil effect. Not really a fan of uh, that effect, but I still kept these. I don't know what the set was called where they were in. And down here is really cool um, an Ultimate Rare Cyberchar from Duelist Pack Kaiba. Um, let me try to show that off. I guess you can kind of see it like that. Um, the Ultimate Rares from Duelist Pack Kaiba look really, really cool. I wish I had more, but um, I don't want to buy them, and I didn't pull any until now besides the Cybertron. Then here, over here we have some uh, new cards. I did try to get back into the game um, like a year ago or something when these cards came out, but uh, I just couldn't. It's way too complicated for me. Um, I did open a few boxes, and these are basically some cards I pulled from these boxes. And here we have some uh, Dark Beginning and Dark Revelation cards. And then over here some OCG cards. Most of these have a different artwork than the TCG ones. Like this one is Final Flame, for example, or the Foolish Burial where the Gravestone is changed and so on. Some more over here. Like you can see the Soul Release is uh, uncensored. The Grace for Charity has a Halo on top. And this one, um, what, I think it's called Otohimo or something, the Spirit Monster. It looks actually completely different, like it's a completely new artwork than the TCG one. And here we have um, some of the Legendary Collection promos and tokens. And over here there are more um, Dark Beginning cards and some Duelist Pack cards and just generally random stuff. This is the only um, Ghost Rare down here. Somebody gifted that to me. Um, was a guy I bought some boxes from. I'm trying to show it off, but it's kind of hard. Yeah, whatever. You probably know how ghost rares look. 
Um, yeah, and here are some more uh, random cards. Nothing really special about them. <clears throat> Alright, next binder. Um, this is the starter deck binder. I'm starting out with starter deck Yugi. Um, the cards are in order of the uh, number in the set. But they might be a little bit uh, different than the original order because for some reason the uh, starter decks were different in Europe and America. So uh, the numbers sometimes don't match up. And uh, these are actually all first editions, so it's a whole set of uh, first edition Star Deck Yugi. And then here we s we are starting with Star Deck Kaiba, same deal. Um, every card at least once, and in first edition, um, that's actually also um, how all my sets are. And I do have uh, multiple copies of some of the cards, like Lord of the Dragon, I have uh, more than just one because. Um, Basically, the goal of my collection was to be able to build any deck that you want, and since Lord of Dragon is in no other set, I had to get more than one from the starter deck one. Um, then here starts the uh, starter deck Joey, again with all the um, original cards. I think it was like the first starter deck that has um, fusions in it. Of course, the scapegoat, one of my favorite cards from back in the day. Here starts the um, starter deck Pegasus with the Relinquished on top, and of course the Toon Monsters, they were kind of cool back in the day, but also not really good. Over here we have um, the Starter Deck Yugi Evolution, that uh, were the first like uh, good decks that you could actually play. Like the original Starter Decks, of course you could play with them, but most cards in there were trash, while uh, the Starter Deck um, Yugi Evolution and Kaiba Evolution had actually some good cards in them that you would uh, use for a while. And then of course here's the Kaiba deck as well. Like the Paladin of White Dragons is also a pretty cool card. Yeah, that's it for the starter decks. Next binder. These are um, structure decks. Um, I'm not sure if I can remember all the names of these uh, structure decks. So basically um, this is Dragon's War, I believe, with um, Luster Dragon and such. Um, the uh, structure decks were really cool when they came out because um, they basically gave you a lot of cards that were re really rare and expensive before in the common version. The next one is, I believe, Zombies Madness. They also introduced some new cards, um, which I believe was always the cover card, the ultra rare. Um, but generally, the ultra rares and the starter decks or structure decks were really, really bad and not very playable. I believe this was um, one of the best structure deck that came out because of the uh, zombies. The pyramid turtle is really strong with um, the Rio Koki. Then we have, um, what was that one called? I think it was Place of Destruction. And also a difference um, to starter decks is that starter decks usually uh, um, don't contain any duplicates, while these um, structure decks actually do. Um, this should be Fury from the Deep with um, aqua or water theme, legendary ocean of course. We have um, Warrior's Triumph. This one actually introduced more than one new card. You had the uh, Guild for the Legend and then the Warrior Lady of the Wasteland was also new. And oh yeah, I think the Divine Sword was also a new card. So there were multiple new ones. And we have a uh, Spellcaster's Judgment. Again, I think the Mystical Beast was uh, new, and there should be another new card in here. Oh yeah, the Nightmare Steel Cage, I believe, was firstly released in this deck. And then we have, I believe, Invincible Fortress, which was a really bad starter deck. Like, the idea doesn't work out. It's like an Earth and Defense deck, which is based uh, around your opponent attacking your monster and taking um, damage, which does not really work out. And last but not least, um, Lord of the Storm, I believe, is this one. With like wind theme. You got like the Harpies and Slate Warrior, which was a pretty strong card back in the day. Yeah, so these are the structure decks. And then the last binder before we start with the um, actual booster sets. Um, that's like my special binder. Um, it contains uh, promotional cards and stuff like tournament pack. So here we have a whole set of Tournament Pack 1, um, the mecha a Mechanical Chaser on top, and then the uh, Super Rare cards. 
and here are all the common monsters. I do only have tournament pack 1 uh, simply because the cards of 2 and 3 are way too expensive for me. Um, I didn't play a lot of tournaments back in the day when these cards like came out so they're not really that nostalgic for me so I don't feel like spending that much money on a set of tournament pack 2 or 3. Um, then here's the uh, movie pack. I believe with the um, shining blue eyes shining dragon and the pyramid of light and then on the next page fitting the exclusive pack with the swingses no collection should be missing these um, basically if you go on ebay and look at any collections that are being sold these guys are always in there and they are really worthless people put them in like because they are ultra rare but everybody has like 10 copies of them and then of course over here is the rest of the um, exclusive pack if you open one of these exclusive packs, you always get the same cards and they are all guaranteed. So you always get the three uh, swingses and these three cards and these two. Then on the next page, there are some uh, random promotional cards like the Machine King. Um, I don't know exactly where these are from. This is a jump promo. Down here, um, these are Bansai promos and Bansai is basically um, a magazine that's the same as... Uh, Shown Jump in America for Germany and uh, they release these two cards with different artworks and I really like these two. Um, then here we have Master Collection 1 and 2. Really cool because they released some uh, cards that were only ultra rare previously as uh, secret rare. Look really awesome. So you got the secret rare Black Luster Soldier in here and of course the secret rare Dark Necrofera looks also pretty cool and the Thousand Ice Restrict. Really nice. Then we have the collector tins. Um, this is collector tin one. I got three copies of each of these because um, they are not reprints. They were all originally released in these tins. Like if you go back, um, these are all reprints, which I already have three copies in the set, so I don't really need more. But these are not. And then we have the collector tin uh, two, which again are uh, all original cards here. So I got three copies of them. They introduced some pretty cool stuff like the uh, Wolf Rider and the Exorion Universe were really strong back in the day. Then uh, here we have the Collector Tin 3 which has reprints in it again. We, uh, it came also uh, out pretty late. Um, I already stopped playing when this one came out but I still got the uh, cards because um, the cards were originally released while I still was playing. Then over here we have the um, Shonen Jump Anniversary Pack. Um, these were like really cheap when they came out and they skyrocketed in price. If you go to eBay now, they are like multiple hundred dollars. And I bought one and opened it and put it like on here. And I believe if you buy a Japanese one, then there is also a Dark Magician Girl in there. It's the same deal as with the exclusive pack. Um, you always get the same cards there or guaranteed if you um, open one of these packs. Then here we have um, promotional cards from the um, special editions. Over here is the Invasion of Chaos Special Edition, basically it contains the, um, these four promos, which were the Secret Rares of Fairy Guardian and Labyrinth of Nightmare, and it's basically the same for all of these. That's the Rise of Destiny Special Edition, the Lost Millennium Special Edition, and then they changed it up, these cards are all ultra rare, so usually these are secret rare and they turn it to the ultra rare, and then down here from Elemental Energy onwards, they used um, ultra rare cards and turned them secret rare, so you got the secret rare Phoenix and the Phoenix, uh, secret rare Horus. And then down here um, we have the uh, Shadow of Infinity special edition promos and for some reason they printed them in two versions so there's always the Ultra and the Secret Rare version and I got these both. So uh, for example right here the Mesmeric Control you have got an Ultra Rare and a Secret Rare version. Don't really know why they did that. Then over here we have a Premium Pack 1. Um, basically I'm not super interested in that pack because um, it came out way after I stopped playing but um, some cards were released in there that existed back in the day in a lot of uh, games on the Game Boy and stuff. Like for example the Marshmallow. I always played that uh, card in games but it was never released in real life until this set and that's why I got this set. So basically you got um, the Magician of Black Cars and the Marshmallow with the Marshmallow glasses. You also got the Shield Crush and then a lot of Yugi's card li cards like the Dark uh, Magic Curtain and I believe the Mystic Box should be here as well, or maybe not. Uh, and anyway, I think the Metal Move was also uh, released here first, and the Legacy of Yadaka Rasu. Yeah, then uh, next page we have the um, what I call Booster Box um, promos or Booster Box tin promos. 
whatever it's called. Um, basically, these are the 2002 ones up here, and then uh, we have the 2003 ones. And this card is kind of funny, I just put it here because if you look at it, it's like the most horrible cut card that I have in my collection. It's basically, it has no top and left border. And it's actually original side, so if you put uh, another card on top, it matches exactly. Um, yeah, and I think the rest of the binder is kind of um, Game Boy game promos and computer game promos, so... Um, here's the World Championship Tournament. I probably don't know all the names of the games right now from the top of my head. STD, I believe, is like Stairway to Destiny Duel. And they often switched around these cards for European and uh, American releases, so... Uh, a game that came with three specific cards in America had different cards in Europe, and then the next game had it swapped around and stuff like that. Um, yeah, there's more uh, World Championship Tournament. I got a lot of Slate Warriors because I really like this card. TFK uh, down here, I believe it's the Falstom Kingdom or something like that. Um, what else do we have? DPT, CMC. I don't really know what these are right now. Here's another um, World Championship 2005. Uh, these are from. Um, no, wait, these down here are from Nightmare Trubader, which was the first DS game, which had like a 3D graphics for the cards, which looked kind of weird. Next page we have Negate Attacks and uh, some Magnet Warriors. These are from Duelist of the Roses. And uh, the cards over here are from the Sacred Cards. Next page um, we have FL1, that's the Forbidden Legacy. And those are actually from a Blister D3 cards right here. Um, I think they were only obtainable in the Blister. Down here is another uh, championship tournament, tournament, and over here are the GBI God cards, um, which is my favorite printing of them. They also exist, uh, exist in two versions. You have the ultra rare version up here and the secret rare version down here. And the secret rare one is like the OG um, God card printing for me at least, and I really like them this way. These are also kind of expensive, um, but I got them anyway. And then down here we have the Power of Chaos, uh, Yugi Destiny promos, and also the Kaiba and Joey promos from Power of Chaos that were uh, that were um, computer games games if you remember, which were uh, really really bad for some reason. You only had like one opponent and got only one card after each duel. It was a huge grind. And then over here we have DDS promos and SDD. Basically, this is another European and American thing. Um, and basically, I think in America they were released in DDS, in, in Europe these cards were released in SDD. And it was really a pain to um, buy these, because sellers always confused DDS and SDD. So, yeah. Um, yeah, over here, these are also from uh, the Sacred Cards, the um, Graceful Dice and Skull Dice. Over here we have uh, Sneak Peek promos. Um, these came out with the first Sneak Peeks of GX sets. I got them because they have the um, Cyber Harpy Lady in them and the Embodiment of Apophis, which are pretty cool cards. There are more sneak peek promos over here. And then, last but not least in this binder, we have the uh, McDonald's uh, promotional cards. Number one, this should be. So we have the Millennium Shield and Cosmo Queen and so on. Yeah, that's it for that binder. Moving on uh, to uh, LOB, I did show this one in a different video of mine, if you go to the channel there will be the uh, same binder but in more detail, I will just flip through it now, uh, of course some blue eyes and try on dragons, and again with these sets I always try to have one uh, row first edition, and of course there are more first edition cards in here because um, I put in most of the cards that I got from the booster boxes, you can see uh, LOB, a lot of uh, Pointless Fusions and Vanilla Monsters, but those are like the monsters we all played way back in the day. You got some Magic cards, the very basic Equip cards and the very basic Field cards. Then of course Dark Hole, Raigeki, very very strong cards. Some more Super Rares, Polymerization and Trap Hole, Fisher, you would play those in every deck. Curse of Dragon, then of course the Red Eye Speed Dragon, which is also a pretty expensive card of this set. We have more uh, Vanilla monsters, more equip cards and some random spell cards. 
Sports of Reeling Light, very good card back in the day. Man Eater Bug. And then of course um, the Monster Reborn, Pot of Creed and last page with the Exodia and uh, Gaia the Dragon Champion. Trying to speed this up a little bit, already at 20 minutes and um, I just started with the sets. Then we have um, Metal Raiders, uh, Gate Guardian, Summon Skull. Of course uh, still contains a lot of uh, vanilla monsters. The Skull Dragon, still didn't pull this guy from any booster. We have the parts of the Gate Guardian over here. And the switch in. Some monsters that could attack directly. Was a new concept back in the day, but they made these monsters kind of weak, so it wasn't really worth playing them. Magician of Faith, a very good rare card. Played in a lot of decks. Change of Heart, um, very very cool artwork in my opinion. Then the um, Time Wizard and Kuribo that everyone knows from the enemy. Catapult Turtle, which Yugi used to destroy the Castle of Dark Illusion, which was really funny, because it made no sense. Yeah, and we have the Labyrinth cards, also known from the enemy. Thunder Dragon, pretty cool card. Twin-handed Thunder Dragon, which is like a super common, super rare from this set. Then Barrel Dragon, one of my favorite cards from the whole set. It's just such a cool card. Solemn Judgment, and then they have a lot of um, ultra rare trap cards in here that um, are counter traps. You got the Magic Chamber, Seven Tools, and Horn of Heaven. Then over here we have Mirror Force, also very cool card. Gotta put these back in here. So. Uh, Heavy Storm, and last page we have a row of Thousand Dragon. On to the next set, Spell Ruler. Um, I put these in smaller binders, um, LOB and Metal Raiders are such huge sets that they don't fit in one of these binders, so I had to use bigger ones. Um, again, uh, we have a Blue Eyes Toon Dragon, then the Axe of Despair. Of course Spell Ruler came out with all the uh, Toon Monsters. Mahavailo was actually a pretty uh, strong card if you got some equipped cards with him. He really took off. Like if you equip him with Axe of Despair, he's already stronger than the Blue Eyes. Really good. We have the Relinqu Relinquished. I always find it a kind, kind of sad that the uh, Relinquished had the same rarity as it had in the starter deck. Um, Snatch Steel, very good card. Confiscation, of course, and the Upstart Goblin. Delinquent Duo, just um, a whole bunch of very good spell cards in this set. Mystical Space Typhoon, Giant Trunade, Painful Choice. A lot of these are also banned and forbidden because they are so good. And more of the Labyrinth cards here. Megamorph, a lot of. Um, Megamorph is actually a card that you can use in a lot of OTK decks. And then the uh, Toons. They, most of the Toons were ultra rare back in the day. Um, but I really think they should have made them more common because the Toons were not that good to justify them being all like ultra rare and super rare. Then we have Cyberchar, super good card. Um, we have the uh, Ritual Search Monsters, the Senju and the Sonic Bird in here. And then a lot of Swarm Monsters like the Giant Germ and Nimble Momonga and the uh, Summoner Monsters like uh, Shining Angel and Flying Kamakiri and those. Mystic Tomato. And then there are the upgraded field cards. And Serpent Night Dragon. And these pages right here are actually the European cards. So basically in Europe they cut out a part of LOB and released it with Spell Ruler and this are these cards right here. These are the ones that were um, released in LOB in America and not in Europe. Right, on to Pharaoh's Servant. Of course, starting out with Jinzo, everyone's favorite. Then we have the Chain Destruction, uh, kind of a waste of an ultra rare spot in my opinion. Um, Dust Tornado, very cool card. Um, it's like a mystical space typhoon, but you can use it to get rid of Imperial Order, which was important back in the day. Then of course we have Call of the Haunted, very good card. And generally this set um, introduced loads and loads of trap cards. Ceasefire, Backup Soldier. Then Nobleman of Cross, oh, very good card back in the day, played in a lot of decks. Premature Burial, another staple card. Some Vanilla Monsters. Buster Blader, also a very very cool card. Some more Swarm Monsters. 
some spell cards, limit to removal, another um, OTK card back in the day, used with like Cyber Ant Dragon or something like that. Legendary Fisherman, known from the enemy, also good. Then Gravity Bind, I used to stall with this card. The Thousand Eyes Idol for the Thousand Eyes Restrict, which we have right here. Over here we have the Goblin Attack Force. For the longest time, this was the strongest four star monster. Fiend Mega Cyber, early uh, version of Cyber Dragon. And then we have Gear Freed, Imperial Order, and Beast of Talvar. Um, I don't know why they made this beast um, ultra rare. Not really justified, in my opinion. Next is Labyrinth of Nightmare. We have the Gemini Elf and the Masked Beast. Um, yeah, right here you can see we have the Amphibian Beast, which is also um, uh, 2400, uh, the same as the Beast of Talbar, and it's only rare in here, so. Kind of weird that they made the Beast Ultra Rare, just one set before. Of course, we have all the uh, masks from Labyrinth of Nightmare here. Torrential Tribute, very cool card, played in a lot of decks. Card of Safe Return was kind of a card that was abused in a lot of uh, infinite loops to like draw Exodia or something like that. A lot of uh, random monsters. The set was kind of based uh, around increasing your life points with monster effects. Was not really good. And then of course the a lot of good equip cards in here, United We Stand and the Mage Power. And a lot of Fiend monsters for Dark Necrofair and Bazoo the Soul Eater. Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer, very good card. Um, yeah, they introduced the idea of the spirits right here, where you remove monsters from um, your graveyard to special summon them, which was picked up again in Invasion of Chaos. Um, down here we have the Last Warrior of Another Planet. I don't remember this card being played a lot back in the day, but um, nowadays it's kind of good, I believe. And a whole bunch of trap cards over here. The misprint uh, Dark Spirit of the Silent, which has a black, uh, black letters instead of white ones. Then the final. I don't think anybody ever pulled this off in a real duel. Some more spell cards and then you're basically through with the magic cylinder on the uh, last page. Next up, LOD. Um, one of my favorite sets, um, I really like the spirit monsters in here and the general setting. So we have the Yada Garasu, really, really cool card, and the Dark Ruler Hadas. And of course, a lot of good fusion monsters were released here. Dark Balter. Okay, these are all kind of like pointless fiend monsters. The warriors in here are also really cool. We have like um, Freak the Matches General and Marauding Captain. And if you summon this uh, guy, you can summon another monster. And if you summon two of these at the same time, then your opponent cannot attack you anymore, which was a pretty cool combo back in the day. Exiled Force, a staple for a long time. Used to like get rid of really strong monsters like the Black Luster Soldier and stuff. Reinforcements of the army, also a, a staple to search out your Exile Force or DD Warrior Lady. We have the uh, Tyrant Dragon down here. I'll pull it up a little bit. Really cool artwork. Don't believe it was played too much. Spear Dragon, 1900 and does piercing damage. Pretty cool. More Dragon stuff. More Dragon stuff. Like they released another Luster Dragon in this set. They already uh, had like one. Well, I believe the other Luster Dragon was uh, released in Magician's Force, so it came after. Then we have the um, Fiber Char. Really, really annoying card. I believe it's kind of banned since forever. They banned it like the next ban list after it came out, and since then it has never been unbanned. It's just ridiculous from effect. And we have um, Ernite Parshat, also one of my favorite monsters. Really, really strong effect back in the day. Um, then we have more spirit monsters. Yamata Dragon is kind of cool, but I don't think um, anyone ever played it, as well as the Hino Kakutsuchi. Then we have the Sura Priest, and um, that was a kind of cool monster. It was light, so you could use it for your Black Luster Soldier, and um, a lot of people played um, Scapegoat, so you could use the Sura Priest to get rid of the Scapegoat. Then there are some um, support cards for spirit monsters. Creature Swap, kind of a cool card. Was wasn't really played in the beginning, but when um, the first ban lists came out, um, it kind of picked up because um, they banned a lot of good cards and then Creature Swap kind of became an option to play. 
Yeah, some trap cards. Bottomless trap hole, um, very, very good card for being only rare. Was used in a lot of decks um, because you can activate this one when your opponent special summons, so it gets rid of like Luster Soldier and Chaos Empire Dragon. And then, of course, um, back here, Injection Fairy Lily and Last Turn. Really, really cool cards. Alright, this is taking really long. Um, next binder is Pharaonic Guardian. Ring of Destruction, cool card. Some uh, random monsters here. More random monsters, and um, of course, the uh, set had kind of the topic of zombies and mummies and stuff. And it introduced the mechanic of flipping monsters um, back face down during your main phase. Donzo Luke, really cool card. You could search it with reinforcements of the army, and it had a very good effect. We have a, a Fushio Richie, not a very good card. Kind of uh, put up too high in uh, rarity. If the Book of Moon, basically this card should have been ultra rare and the Fushio Richie should have been rare. Would have made more sense. And we have the Mirage of Nightmare, which was um, also banned, I believe. Um, more uh, zombie support cards. And some random trap cards. Trap Dust Shoot, pretty good card that was played a lot. My binder is kind of broken right here. Hell Power More. Um, nobody really played this guy back in the day, but the effect is actually not too bad. We have the Gravekeeper Spy, also a very good card was played. And the Gravekeepers in general, it was like the first archetype that um, was kind of playable. Because the Necro Valley had a very good effect where um, nobody can use cards that target the graveyard, so you cannot um, special summon the Chaos Monsters. Down here we have the Spirit Reaper was a staple for me in every deck because it's just so good from the effect. A lot of spell cards, you see Necro Valley, Dark Room of Nightmare for some uh, burn support. And up here um, Terraforming, um, a card that was played over the years in basically every single deck. Um, especially later in the game when uh, decks always were reliant on field spell cards. Then we have uh, Metamorphosis, which is also a very strong card, lets you special summon any fusion monster up to I believe rank 6 or level 6. So you could get out um, the Dark Bolt or the Terrible to negate uh, like spell cards and there's the other two that negates trap cards. <clears throat> and there are a bunch of ultra rares at the end of the set like Bicer Shock, Question and Robe of Life. I don't think anybody ever used these. Nightmare Wheel and then the Lava Golem which were kind of cards for uh, burn decks. Then we have Magician's Force, um, favorite set of a lot of people, starting out with the Dark Magician Girl, which has really uh, gotten expensive over the uh, last like year. Then we have the XYC cards, um, I played these back in the day, they were really cool. The set introduced the uh, Union Monsters, they did not really work out, but it was a cool concept. Paladin of the White Dragon, really cool looking card some blue eyes support. A lot of spell cards. Um, wave motion cannon. That was kind of broken back in the day. If you play the burn deck and you uh, draw like two of these and then your opponent only has four turns to draw something like a mystical space typhoon or heavy storm or something like that. Um, secret barrel, another good burn card. Then here's all the fusions of the XYZ monsters. Um, those are all really cool. And um, Blaster Dragon, very cool card, and the uh, Amazonas Monsters. Um, that's another archetype that was introduced, but the uh, Amazonas did not really work out. And then we have some um, Dark Magician and Buster Blader support in here as well. We have Breaker and Chaos Command Magician, also cool looking cards. Um, Tribe Infecting Virus um, was banned back in the day, as well as Magical Scientist, um, both kind of too strong, especially the Scientist. Some more random cards, nothing really important here. Amazonas Archers, that card should have been like a rare or a common. Don't know why I made it super rare. A lot of trap cards, and then of course down here we have the um, Dark Paladin and the, uh, the Fusion Wave Motion and Double Spell. Um, uh, the the uh, corrected artwork down here is like the one card I'm missing from my collection. 
that I would like to have, but it's way too expensive. I'm not going to buy that. So basically we have the um, non-corrected artwork right here in first ad. So this is the first release of the card in the set and it was the wrong artwork. It was supposed to be this artwork, so you could send in uh, this card and they would return the other card. And if you were sending a first edition card, they would return a first edition card. So that's why these cards are very scarce and very expensive. And it's very, very hard to find these, this version of Dark Paladin in first edition. And yeah, as I said, for me, it's just way too expensive to buy this guy. Yeah, that's it for Magician's Force. Next up, Dark Crisis. Um, got the Vampire Lord as first secret rare. They introduced the Guardians, which did not really work out in my opinion. And we have the Reflect Bounder, that was a cool card. Again, good for um, cast decks. Um, Shinado, I don't think anybody really played this guy, as well as all the other like super rares you can see here, Berserk Dragon, Mirage Knight, all uh, kind of garbage cards. I'm generally not a huge fan of Dark Crisis. Up here we have the Exodia Necros, which is uh, the only card that's really valuable in this set. Then we have um, the Warrior Lady, probably the best card that came out with this. Was also stable, you could search it with reinforcements of the army and the effect is really really strong. Here are the, uh, all the um, equipped cards for the Guardians. Um, the only one worth mentioning is the Butterfly Dagger because um, the wording of this card was really bad when it was made and it enabled a lot of infinite loops, so they banned it. And there's a lot of um, support for uh, equipped cards. Uchama Trio, kind of a troll card. Um, Interdimensional Metal Transporter could be used to save like one of your monsters from a mirror force or something. Skill Drain, of course, a decent card. Can be used to shut your opponent down. The Archfiends, another archetype that was um, introduced here. They did also not really work out. The costs were just way too high. Tsukoyumi, um, that's another very good card. If you summon it, you can flip one card on the field face down, it was used to like either flip down your opponent monsters or um, your own Magician of Faith to get another spell card back. <clears throat> then more spell cards here, Final Countdown, another win condition card, but again 20 turns back in the day it was not playable. Sakuretsu Armor, also a very decent card from this set, um, was played in a lot of decks. And then finishing off with Blast Held by Tribute and Judgment of Anubis. Um, the idea behind these two cards was kind of cool, but they were too specific to be played. Then IOC, also the favorite set of a lot of people. Um, got the Chaos Emperor Dragon up here, of course. One of the, probably the best card in the whole set. This guy was just so strong, basically if you draw this uh, card, you already won the duel. Um, Strike Ninja, some people played that guy. Berserk Gorilla, the first monster that had 2000 attack and wasn't uh, absolutely horrible. And uh, yeah, a lot of monsters in the set are based on removing stuff from your graveyard from play. Got the Chaos Sorcerer, which is the small play cluster soldier. Don't understand why they made this guy common. It should have been like at least super rare. Down here's the um, actual play cluster soldier. One of the coolest cards back in the day. And then there are a lot of uh, like random cards in here, some uh, beast support, and a lot of these cards are depending on removing stuff from play. Dark Mirror Force um, looks kind of cool, but was not really played. Bun a whole bunch of normal monsters. These were all pretty decent because they have 1900 or 1800 attack for uh, four stars, or even the five star monsters are not too bad. Next up, we have the Dark, Dark Magician of Chaos. Also a very good and broken card, enabled also a lot of um, like OTK decks, very strong. Manticore of Darkness, another uh, infinite loop card, don't know if it was like limited or something back in the day. And then this set has a lot of random ultra rares like your Black Tyranno, uh, the Vaya Dragon, Insect Princess, it's just all uh, kinds and types of monsters that are ultra rare. Guardian Angel Joan, none of these are really uh, outstanding or extremely good. We have the Dimension Fusion, that was another very good card, returns all your removed from play monsters. Smashing Crown, a lot of people played that card. Compulsory Evocation Device, um, back in the day it was not very good, but I believe um, later on when like uh, 
XYC and Synchro Monsters came out, this card became really good because um, if you use it on like XYC monster, it gets returned to the uh, extra deck instead. So that's really good. Invader of Darkness, um, really kind of bad secret rare. Should have made the uh, Black Luster Soldier the other secret rare. That would have made the most sense in my opinion. Yeah, that's it for Invasion of Chaos. And then we go on to the last um, of the original sets, which is Ancient Sanctuary. Um, really not a fan of this set. Mostly uh, bad cards. They have the uh, fairy thing going on in here and weak monsters like level 1 and 2 monsters and some defense stuff. So you have like monsters like the uh, Gear Golem with 2200 defense. Blowback Dragon, which was like a little bit better than uh, the Barrel Dragon. Suborg, that was one of the better cards of the set. A lot of people played this card. Get, if you summon him, you can destroy a monster on the field. It was pretty good. And of course the enemy controller, decent card, um, the Ocklord um, Serato, don't think anybody played this guy. You have the uh, Burst Stream of Destruction and then on the Dark Magic attack. Um, back in the day these were also not really good, but they had cool artworks. And then of course all the uh, low level monsters and all the cards that support the low level monsters. The um, Emissary of the Afterlife. If you use that one in your Exodia deck. Night is Silent, that was a decent card, also enabled like infinite loops because you can uh, get one in your graveyard and if you have to discard you can discard one and get the other one back to your hand, so you can abuse that. A lot of spell cards, use the Dark Magic attack. The uh, Sarcophagus cards that were used to summon the Ultra Red dude we saw earlier. Curse of Anubis, a kind of a defensive card some people used. And Macera the Will. Really bad secret rares in this set. Okay, on uh, to GX we go. Um, basically, for GX sets, I always have the ultimate rare version of the card. So, for example, here's the Chuckle and Patchy. Um, I have two rare ones and an ultimate rare one, and I always have the ultimate rare version of each card. Um, I guess when I do the videos, I only show these binders in more details. I will show off all the ultimate rares and how they look. Yeah, same for horrors, we have the ultimate rare versions here. Um, there's a big difference between American and European ultimate rares in some sets. It's not in each set, but in some sets. And the European ones usually look way better. Yeah, but anyways, um, Soul of Duelist kind of introduced the level monsters. They weren't horrible when they came out, but um, Still not a lot of people played them, but they were usable. Mobius, the uh, Frost Monarch, one of the best cards of the set. If you will summon him, you can destroy up to two spell trap cards, so that's very nice. And you got like the uh, remake monsters here. And of course these sets are very small, they're always only uh, 60 cards. Nothing really mentionable here. Trap cards were really shitty in this set. Nothing really good. Then Rise of Destiny, another uh, kind of failed set like Ancient Sanctuary. There's just nothing really good in here. Like the creator was the uh, main card of the set, but it was not that good. And yeah, more level monsters. The Mystic Swordsman. Silent Swordsman. Then we have the Perfect Machine King. Um, some new Harpies and Harpy support. Tester lost the Firestorm Monarch, that was one card that you could play in this set. Um, if you summon him, you can discard a card from your opponent's hand, which is kind of cool. Dekoichi was played, if he gets flipped, you can draw a card. And of course, it's Dark type for your um, Chaos deck. And there's some more um, Harpy support over here. Divine Wrath was a decent card, could use it like against Chaos Emperor Dragon. Yeah, and that's basically it. Next we have um, Flaming Eternity. Um, that's, uh, this set kind of put out some uh, beast support, I believe. Got the Phoenix, which was a kind of strong card. If he gets um, destroyed by a card effect, you can special summon it in your next turn and destroy all spell and trap cards on the field. 
So your opponent has to either remove the card from play or um, destroy it in battle. And I mean, if you have a 2400 monster on your side of the field, then he's probably not going to destroy it in battle. So it was a cool card. And again, a um, lot of beast support in here. Chiron the Mage was also decent. Had a good attack stat and good effect. Um, Gatling Dragon, kind of a cool card. I mean, not playable, but cool. Lightning Vortex after they uh, bend Raigeki and most other destruction cards. A lot of people play that. And more uh, beast support and trap cards. And of course the uh, Deck Devastation Drivers. It's also a decent card. Next we have Lost Millennium. Um, introducing the Elemental Heroes. A lot of people like those. And of course we have the Ancient Gear Monsters, the Ancient Gear Golem. Those were kind of decent, and then it's just a lot of uh, rock monsters in here. Um, got some monks, which were really pointless. DD Survivor, that was a very good card. A um, lot of people played up to three copies of DD Warrior Lady back in the day, and then you have um, the uh, Bottomless Trap Hole and the uh, Black Luster Soldier. Essentially, a lot of people were playing monster removals that would remove your monsters from play. And this guy just comes back if it happens to him, so he was really good. You would always use him to um, destroy the Diddy Warrior Lady. We have the cool ritual monster here, the Reshef, Re um, the Dark Being, and the Elemental Mistress. And then, of course, the first Elemental Hero Fusions. Brain Control, very good card after a change of heart was banned. Some non so good uh, spell cards and some non so good trap cards. Yeah, nothing really worth mentioning back there. Next we have Cybernetic Revolution, another strong set with uh, strong monsters as you can see. No, but basically um, yeah, they introduced these uh, Roid monsters and of course the uh, Cyber Dragon. And Cyber Dragon was really like a game changer back in the day. If you didn't have Cyber Dragon in your deck when this set came out then you already lost. It was just so strong. Um, yeah, a lot of machine monsters. They remade Goblin Attack Force, lowered attack a little bit, but gave it some defense. And they actually um, put in Union Monsters again. I think it was the first set that uh, released Union Monsters after Magician's Force. Here we have the um, Cyber Dragon Fusions, so the Cyber Twin Dragon and the Cyber End Dragon. Really cool cards. Then Miracle Fusion for the Elemental Heroes. I think here uh, Power, Bo uh, yeah, Power Bond is also a very strong card. And the system down was used later on, I believe. Um, Skyscraper, the first field spell card for elemental heroes. And some random trap cards. Um, elemental energy. As the name suggests, there are some um, elemental heroes in here. And of course, Dark World monsters were introduced, which was a strong archetype. Got the um, Queen's Knight, Jack's Knight and King's Knight, you know from the enemy. New um, Elemental Heroes, Water Dragon, not a good card, but it has a really nice artwork, especially as Ultimate Rare. Then more of the Dark World monsters, which all have an effect if they get discarded. They were really strong back in the day. And we have um, the VW XYZ Dragon Catapult Cannon um, and more Elemental Hero Fusions. Got the Elemental Hero Shining Flare Wing Man, really cool looking. Pot of Avarice, another card everybody played after like Pot of Greed and all the draw cards were banned and this guy came out so everybody played it. Um, some bad equip cards down here, really kind of pointless. Some Dark World support and random trap cards to finish it off. Next we have Shadow of Infinity, of course with the uh, Divine Beasts. I don't think anybody really played these, but they were kind of cool. We have new uh, Cyber Dragons and new Ancient Gears, so the set kind of expanded on everything. Also got new Elemental Hero, new Machine Monsters, new Warrior Monsters. I don't think the set really had uh, a theme going on. It was just everything randomly. This card up here, Tree Bone Frog, was really, really strong. Super annoying card if you have to play against it. Um, yeah, we got the uh, Ruin and the Mice. These are kind of cool cards. They recently got some new support, like 20 years later or something. 
um, yeah, a lot of spell cards. It's not really a lot to say about these GX sets. There are a lot of cards in these uh, sets that are not really useful. And then uh, the last set that I have completed is Enemy of Justice. I barely know anything. It was like the last set that I played in. I got like a couple boosters, but not a lot. So I can't say a lot about these cards. Got the Destiny Heroes, which was a new thing that was introduced after the Elemental Heroes. And also a lot of machine type monsters going on again. Some uh, Harpy support and Wind monsters, Light monsters. The Heralds were introduced in this set. And of course, some more Elemental Hero Fusions. The, what was this guy called? Elemental Hero Shining Phoenix Enforcer. Got the uh, Hero Spell Cards. Um, Clock Tower Prison, I believe it's the field card for Destiny Heroes. And then we have uh, yeah, some random trap cards again. Don't really know if any of these are any good. And then on to the very last binder, which is unfortunately the largest one as well. Um, this is a whole set of legendary collection Joey's World, so get ready for that. Um, basically uh, it was like two years ago some dude on eBay sold like 100 packs and I just bought them and then I did like draft play with my friends and after I opened all of these I noticed that I actually have like the uh, triple master set almost finished so I just bought the rest of the cards that were missing so I actually do have these, uh, this triple master set of um, Legendary Collection Joey's World which is kind of an accomplishment to be honest because uh, the Legendary Collections are probably the biggest sets that came ever out don't know if there are any bigger ones but yeah this set uh, just contains a lot of cards that are from the enemy that uh, Joey uses or my uses or any um, other enemies of Joey use. Got the Secret Rare Raigeki down here. Secret Rare Scapegoat, that's a really cool version, and a Secret Rare Pot of Creed is in here. I really like how they made a lot of cards Secret Rare in here. Bottomless Trap Ball, very cool Secret Rare version. And here comes the um, Harpy and Amazonas support. A lot of these are super rare, that's also really cool. Cyber Harpy Lady, then there's the Harpy's Feather Duster in here as well. Random cards, Trap Chummer, Made Secret Rare, some Mario cards here, Mirror Force, also Secret Rare, very nice. We have the Metal Reflect Slime, I think that was one of the first sets where this guy was in. And when this came out, a lot of people played dinosaur decks and these two dinosaurs were the strongest that were available, so they reprinted these in Secret Rare in here. More dinosaur stuff. Uh, yeah, more and more. Gotta go a little bit faster here. We have the Solemn Judgment and Secret Rare in here. And they have um, zombie stuff. We made the Spirit Reaper Ultra Rare, which is cool. Yeah, nothing really too special about these cards right here. Um, Gate Guardian in common in here. Some random cards. For some reason, they put in some tunes. I don't know why. Then, um, as this game out, Dark World was really popular, so they just reprinted about all Dark World monsters in Secret or Ultra Rare in here. Next page as well, the Snow and Dark World Lightning. Gateway to Dark World, it's almost all of Secret Rare. They really wanted to squeeze some money out of the players here. Gravekeeper Spy in Secret Rare, that's cool. Necro Valley in common. Injection Fairy Lily, common. Mystical Space Typhoon in Secret Rare, that's also really cool. Book of Moon, Secret Rare, very nice. And I think that's about it, yeah. And of course the uh, Compulsory Evacuation Device. This was basically the time, as I said earlier, where the card was played and was really good. Yeah guys, so that's it for the uh, binders, finally. Only took an hour, on top of uh, the time I already took before. And the next part will be uh, um, my sealed product collection. Alright guys, so um, on to the next part we go. Um, we are starting with the sealed product now. And I think first I will show you some random stuff that's not in my display. And then we uh, um, go to the tins. And last but not least I show you my display case that I have. 
Um, so yeah, basically uh, I do have some blisters. I have like two cybernetic revolution blisters and um, exclusive pack blister. But other than that I don't have any. Um, I'm not super interested in blisters and I only would collect them if I could uh, like get them all at once. Hunting them down uh, is a lot of work for these and um, when I was little uh, there were not a lot of uh, blisters sold back in the day in Germany specifically so um, I'm not really interested in collecting them. Yeah, what else do we have? Um, I do have a Shadow of Infinity and the Rise of Destiny Special Edition. Um, I do actually have one of each Special Editions but uh, those are in my display so uh, these two are not in there and I do have these two extra. Maybe I will open them one day for um, like a pack opening video because um, I'm not really super interested in keeping them sealed. Um, then next I do have two starter decks. Um, Evolution, these do not really belong into the sealed collection because they are not actually sealed. So um, only the Kaiba deck is sealed and the Yuki deck is already open. Um, again with starter decks it's kind of the same with, with like blister packs. I'm not super interested in starter decks because um, they're always the same. Um, there's always the same cards inside and they're kind of boring. And uh, back in the day, I, I mean, I had the uh, first starter decks that came out, but um, yeah, again, I'm not super interested in having these uh, sealed. And like the Yugi and Kaiba starter decks are getting kind of expensive now and hard to find. So um, I do have these two. Um, these are both opened and unlimited, but uh, they are enough for me to keep. So I can look at these two if I ever want to see the starter decks and I don't actually need sealed versions. And then of course I also have the uh, Pegasus and Joey. These are actually German ones, first edition, and I believe these are also both sealed, so um, at least these two are sealed. And again, it's the same like with the blisters. If I can find them all at once, I will buy them, but I'm not going to hunt them down. I'm not that interested in them. Like if I can find them, I'd get them just to have them in my collection because starter decks kind of belong into a sealed collection, but yeah, and then uh, we have one starter deck Kaiba Reloaded, which um, I got from the, uh, what's it called, like the uh, Kaiba case with the um, Duelist packs inside. I don't remember the name of that, but I opened it on the channel not so long ago. Then I have um, a sealed legendary collection. Of course, um, these things kind of lost the value because they were reprinted again. I bought that one, in, like, I believe it was two years ago for like 70 or 80 bucks and back then it was a good deal because um, they were out of print since like 2012 or 13 or whenever the first set was released of these. Um, they were getting more expensive and I wanted to pick one up before they were not available anymore but then Konami decided to reprint them in like 2018 so now they're basically worthless. Then um, next I do have two uh, um, boxes of Duelist Pack Battle City. Um, I got these from a larger collection that I bought. Um, I don't really know what's inside or how valuable they are. I think they're around $100 or something. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to open these. Again, I don't know what's inside and I think I'm going to keep them a little longer and then maybe sell them. And the same goes for um, these right here, um, Millennium Pack sealed uh, boxes. There's like uh, two English ones and two German ones. Got these with the same collection. And again, I don't really know what's inside um, or how much they're worth currently. I believe these are about 100 as well. And same deal as with the um, Duelist pack. I'll just keep them for now and maybe sell them later. Or maybe if they're not worth anything, I will just open them. But yeah. And after that, one last thing I have right here um, is this box. This is the most valuable thing in this first part of the seed collection. Um, it says right here, contents 20 blisters, and it's um, first edition Duelist Pack Kaiba blisters. Um, and these are double blisters, so basically there's two packs in each blister. So these are 40 packs of Duelist Pack Kaiba, which uh, I believe is a little bit more than the uh, normal booster box has. And uh, these uh, really rose in price, so even though they reprinted them, they didn't reprint first edition once, and this one should be first edition. I mean, I can't prove it, I didn't open it, but I bought it as first edition, so I believe that's what's inside. And these boxes got really valuable. Then, um, next we're gonna start with the tins. Um, 
I don't know when these tins were released. I believe it's like 2004 or 2005. Um, and I don't have these completed. I do have um, two Panther Warrior, then one Gifford the Lightning, one Rocket Warrior, and one Exarian Universe. Um, I got these from eBay when they were really, really cheap. I bought these for like uh, 30 bucks or so a piece. And uh, I don't know which ones are missing. I'm not sure if the Dark Magician Girl is in this set or in the other set that was released. Um, anyway, if I can find the missing ones for not too much money, I'll get them. But other than that, I'm not super interested in having uh, all the tins. Okay, let's put these aside and get the other ones. So this is the other set um, with the Swift Gaia and the Obnoxious Caddy Guardian. Only have these two from this set. Um, again, I'm not super interested in tins. Didn't have a lot of these when I was young and I rather collect more boxes than tins. Then uh, next up we have the, I believe, 2003 uh, tins as well. Of course it's tins. Um, I showed these in the mail day video where I received them and basically this was the same deal. I didn't have any of these tins um, until I found them all together and then I bought them. I wasn't interested in hunting, down, hunting them down uh, as single tins as well. So it was kind of like either I find them all and buy them all or I don't get them. And I found these all together. So this is the whole 2003 tin set, which uh, also got really valuable recently. And then last but not least, as you already guessed probably, I also do have the 2002 tin set, which wasn't the same uh, mail day video as the 2003 tin set. Let's get them all here. We summon Skull, them with the Beast Skull Dragon and the Dark Magician. And down here we have the Blue Eyes White Dragon, Lord of Dragon and Red Eyes Black Dragon. These are also um, really, really valuable. And with tins, um, I really do believe that Opening them is not worth it at all because you can only get unlimited packs. The tins themselves are really, really valuable because um, they are very scarce and hard to find. But if you open them, you basically kill all the value because the unlimited packs inside are not worth anything. Yeah, alright, that's it for the tins and the next part will be my display. Gotta see how I show you that. Alright guys, and on to the next part of the video. Um, I'll show you now the uh, whole sealed collection that I have in my glass display right here. Um, I'll first show you the whole thing um, and then I'll kind of set up the camera so I can show you each like shelf on its own. Um, I'll just uh, start right here at the top. There are some uh, cards sitting on top of here and two of the sealed anniversary uh, box sets. Then uh, let's just kind of start over here. There is my um, Blue Eyes White Dragon collection. As you can see, I always have uh, sealed boxes in there and some um, loose packs and then of course uh, some of the major cards of the set. So uh, if I like put my camera up here, there's um, the Blue Eyes White Dragon back there. Um, I'm kind of sorry for the lighting right here. Um, since it's winter, it's really dark outside all the time and I have to use um, these artificial lights and they're really bright, so there are some reflections in here. Um, anyways, here we have uh, Metal Raiders and Spell Ruler, again with some uh, packs and cards in there. And if I go down over here, we have um, Pharaoh, or no, uh, Pharaoh's Servant and Labyrinth of Nightmare, again with some cards. Over here we have Legacy of Darkness and Pharaoh the Guardian. And if I go even lower, we have Magician's Force and Dark Crisis. Over here we have Invasion of Chaos, Ancient Sanctuary and the uh, reprint sets, so uh, Dark Beginning and Dark Revelation. And all the way down here there is um, GX. And over here we have some random stuff like um, Special Editions, Master Collection and some Tournament Packs. Right, so um, I will cut the video now and then we will look at each of these in detail. Alright guys, so um, before I get into the display in detail, I wanted to show you this um, cube I built. Basically, um, I bought this acrylic cube and I wanted to throw in empty packs and let it fill up, but it didn't really look good, so what I did was I built um, a smaller cube out of paper and I taped these empty pack sleeves to the paper and then um, I slided it in here and filled it up with some uh, excess paper uh, stuff that's crumpled up and it's really looking cool now, I think. Basically, it's uh, all just like empty packs all around here. And um, on top of, well, of course I didn't fill in the backside since you cannot see it, so 
uh, as you can see right here, it's just a paper cube within an acrylic cube. And if you go to the bottom, uh, you can open that thing and you can see I just stuffed in more paper. So that's a really cool thing that you can do with the empty packs. But uh, now I will be back with the display for real. Alright, so um, I'm going to start out with showing you the uh, very top of this. So as you can see over here we have um, a Trishula and a Blue Eyes White Dragon. As you know I only uh, collect old school stuff, so this Trishula is kind of um, special. And as you can see right here, um, it's actually an, an extended card. So um, an artist uh, drew on it with pens and it looks really really cool. And basically this is from an artist on Instagram and uh, she uh, does really cool card extensions and this one was uh, for auction so I bid on it and I won. And uh, yeah she does really cool art and you can check her out and I believe her uh, Instagram name is Art of the Cards and you will see more cards uh, from her later on. Then we have um, the OG Blue Eyes White Dragon over here. In the middle we have um, these metal printed God cards. So. Basically these look exactly like normal cards, so they have the um, same size and everything. Uh, but they're pr imprinted in metal and look like this, as you can see, golden. Um, I believe there also exist uh, different cards like the Dark Magician and Blue Eyes White Dragon and so on. In this kind of style. And I just think these uh, look really cool, especially cut cards. I wanted to get uh, the Dark Magician and the Blue Eyes since a long time, but I didn't get around to uh, buying these yet. And then on the other side over here, uh, we do have the OG Dark Magician from the um, starter deck and then one of the uh, test print cards, that's actually a foil card. These also exist um, as common and as secret rare, I believe. So um, you can happen to have these in your booster packs. I never had one of these, um, I bought this one. Alright, so um, behind these cards you can see I have two sealed uh, anniversary sets. Basically when I um, opened the two on the channel, I bought another two that I, I'm keeping sealed for now. Maybe I'm opening these later or I'm selling them or whatever. And if I take these away, you can see my uh, sealed pack collection, or at least uh, the part that's not inside of the display. Um, I mean, I can go through these right now. Um, I'll show you some of these. Uh, basically, most of these are, as you can tell, original packs or reprint packs, but I don't have a lot of uh, like GX packs or something like that. So there's a whole stuff or a uh, pack a whole stack of random uh, reprint packs and we have some tournament pack 4 right here. I believe these are all scaled. Uh, I didn't buy them as scaled packs but I guess these are scaled them anyway. And here we have some uh, random GX packs. I have two Crimson Crisis and one Tactical Evolution and the rest of these are all Gladiators Assault. I uh, believe most of these are German and as you might know I'm not a huge fan or collector of Gladiators Assault, so these are just sitting here. And the same goes for this one right here, which is all uh, Phantom Darkness. So there's a whole stack of Phantom Darkness, English and German, I believe. And these are sitting just here as well. Again, uh, I'm not too tempted to open these because I don't know a lot about these sets, but maybe one day I'll open them on the channel. And yeah, then uh, going back in here, we have a stack of OG packs. Uh, basically, these are no reprints, these are all um, original packs even um, the Blue Eyes one. And I'm kind of uh, want to keep at least one of each of the original packs sealed, so uh, that is the stack that I'm not opening. And over here, all the way back, we have um, a stack of Dark Revelation. It's all the same, Dark Revelation 2 actually, so you can pull uh, like uh, the Chaos Empire Dragon and Black Luster Soldier and so on. Uh, the row next to it is another row with Dark Revelation, as you can see. Next row, I don't, won't pull all of the packs out because it's kind of a lot of work to do that. So we have Dark Revelation 1 over here. Alright, let's uh, move the packs aside so you can see what's going on. Alright, that then uh, another stack which is Dark Revelation 3. So that's the first reprint of the GX sets. I believe these are around the box or so. Um, then the next stack over here um, is some original Labyrinth of Nightmare. These were not reprinted recently, so um, I got some original of these. And some first edition Ancient Sanctuary. Again, not uh, a very cool set. I really don't like it, so I don't have a lot of these. 
Um, and the three stacks you can see behind here um, are all Power of the Duelist, first edition. I believe uh, I bought 100 packs of these in total. Of course, we already opened it some in the random pack openings, but there's still a lot to go. Um, I explained it earlier that I might want to go for um, a Power of the Duelist collection, so the triple master set that uh, you saw earlier on. Um, over here we have a stack Elemental Energy, and below that there is Shadow of Infinity. These Shadow of Infinity packs are all from the resealing guy, so these are all resealed, I believe. Let's put that over here. Um, yeah, moving the camera a little bit. Then next we have a stack Invasion of Chaos. These are all reprint packs. And I guess some original ones down here as well. But most original um, Invasion of Chaos packs that I own are also from the reseller. Uh, resealer, so. Uh, you probably won't pull like a Chaos Emperor Dragon also from those. Then next up we have Cyberdog Impact. Also got a uh, hundred of those where we already opened a few and I might start a collection of this set as well. Um, next these are just some more random packs I believe. So some original Spell Ruler, Dark Crisis, some Soul of the Duelist, some original Invasion of Chaos, exclusive packs, Ancient Sanctuary, and uh, the rest of these stacks are just uh, Cyberdog Impact. Oh, so these three stacks are Cyberdog Impact. Yeah, down here, uh, again, I think I already went through that. Those are just all uh, some random packs here. I'm always trying to keep this sorted, but it's kind of hard, as you can tell. Then over here, this one is another uh, stack invasion of Chaos, all uh, reprints. I got a whole pun a bunch of the reprints. And then last but not least, over here we have uh, some Pharaonic Guardian, original, then, uh, well, these didn't have a reprint. Uh, Dark Crisis, these are also original and non-reprints. More exclusive packs, a um, few Metal Raiders and some more Dark Crisis. And all the way over here, uh, we have another Labyrinth of Nightmare. Then a ton of Pharaonic Guardian, more Labyrinth of Nightmare and Pharaonic Guardian. And the rest of the packs over here is all the Lost Millennium. So, uh, got 100 of these as well, and we also already opened quite a bunch of those. Alright, that's it for the um, loose packs. Of course there are more on my display that uh, are in the open boxes, but I'll show you that right now. Alright guys, so um, I guess we start on the bottom right of my display. Um, you might notice a change of lighting or something right now, because um, I have to actually redo this part, because... Uh, I tried to freehand the camera on the first time and it was just way too shaky so I have to uh, redo this with um, a camera stand. But anyways, uh, starting right here we have the um, exclusive pack, it's a sealed box. Um, I mean exclusive pack is not really worth a lot but um, I find it kind of cool to have a sealed box because you don't see these too often so um, that's a nice thing. Then next we have uh, the Duelist pack Yugi. Uh, it's a first edition box and basically you saw the Kaiba earlier where I had the blister. Of course I don't put the blister in my display because uh, it's just a grey box while uh, this one looks really nice. So I have both of these uh, in first edition. Then down here is a uh, battle pack, Epic Dawn, that's um, the first one that came out. This one is pretty cool, the later ones um, are kind of lame. Then uh, back here on top. We have uh, extended art new The Magical Swordsman. That's uh, also from the Instagram artist I mentioned earlier. Then we have a couple more tournament packs sitting up here just uh, to make it look a little nicer. I did already have a whole bunch on top, if you remember. Then uh, over here we have some uh, movie, yeah, I think it's just called movie packs. Um, you got these when you went to the first movie and they could contain the Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. I might uh, open a couple of these on the channel. And over here um, I have a whole bunch of exclusive packs. And as I said earlier, these always contain the same cards and it's always the uh, uh, Swings Ultra Rare cards in here. Then next thing in here um, we have Special Editions. This is the uh, first one that came out, Invasion of Chaos. These always contain uh, free cards and a promotional card. We have the uh, Rise of Destiny, the second one. Then I believe the next one that came out is uh, The Lost Millennium. Then whoops, we have Shadow of Infinity. 
And last but not least, there is Elemental Energy. These are all uh, sealed still. And then uh, behind here, last one for uh, that shelf, we have the uh, Master Collection 1. Um, these are not that hard to find, but they are getting uh, more expensive as well. And then on the right here, we have the Master Collection 2. These are uh, really hard to find nowadays and are kind of expensive. I mean, they're still on eBay, but uh, yeah, they're getting more and more scarce. All right, then next to the bottom left, um, on front right here, we have an Extended Art Mobius. Frost Monarch, um, pretty cool looking card, again from the same artist. Then um, right here we have the opened uh, Elemental Energy box, so this is uh, already boxes that I opened on my channel and I put in some uh, loose packs that I bought, um, these are of course not first edition, and these are also the packs that I always use for my pack openings. Then uh, yeah, next these are all the empty boxes, we have Flaming Eternity, also filled with some loose packs. Next up is um, Soul of Duelist. And down here, uh, these are also the open boxes with some loose packs. We have uh, Rise of Destiny right here. I originally planned, because I, I was getting two displays, and I originally planned to um, have one display for the original sets and one display for the GX sets, but uh, it didn't work out in the end because these displays uh, looked way bigger than they were, so I ended up barely fitting the original sets in there, so I only have this one shelf for GX. Um, anyways, next we have the, uh, the Lost Millennium box. And then down here we have Enemy of Justice. There's also some packs. And Cybernetic Revolution. Um, this is the set where I don't have packs. I only have uh, this one and the one in the uh, blisters I showed you earlier. So uh, these are really hard to come by to find as uh, loose packs. And then we have the Shadow of Infinity box. That's also filled. Alright, and then in the back right here um, are the sealed boxes. So on top is um, Soul of Duelist box. Below that there is uh, Rise of Destiny. That one uh, went into customs and they opened the package with a knife. Instead of opening uh, where the opening is, they just used the knife and cut it to the side and they cut in the box and you can see right here there's like a cut inside of it. Um, luckily it was sent via the uh, eBay global shipping program and they were nice enough and refunded the box, so that's really nice. Then I got another box because of that, uh, so here's another uh, Rise of Destiny. Then next up we have an Unlimited Flaming Eternity. I bought this one as first edition box, but it came unlimited. Um, I think it was from Throne Toad or something like that, and um, I contacted the seller and they gave me a partial refund at least. So I kept the box. I didn't want to send it back since they gave me a partial refund. And anyway, then I got uh, this box. This is then uh, the first edition one. Since I want to have um, a first edition box of each set, I had to get another one. Whoops. Then next up, there's the Lost Millennium box. This one looks kind of beat up. Um, it's the, from the same seller that we, uh, where the box was from that we opened on the channel. So it's a European print. You can see it all right here. There are the uh, openings on the side. That's kind of normal for uh, European boxes. And next up there is um, Cybernetic Revolution. And looking at these, it's kind of crazy how uh, expensive these are today, because um, your chances to get um, a rare card are like really slim, or uh, let me say an expensive card, because most of these sets they have only uh, one or two expensive cards, and mostly it's the uh, cover card. And to pull the cover card in Ultimate Rare, um, it's just really hard, and there are not very high chances to do so, so I don't really understand why these boxes are so expensive. I mean, like a year ago, they were at, I don't know, 100, and you know, the boxes like Enemy of Justice were at like $60, and nowadays um, all of these go for 300 or at least 200 It's crazy. And then uh, back here in the corner, as you can see, we have the uh, Legendary Collection, that's uh, the Binder one. I believe the uh, uh, Binder one always has better pull ratios than the, uh, what's it called, Game Board Edition. Alright, so next row. Um, I'm gonna start out with the single cards I guess that are in here. So we have this uh, Dark Magician of Chaos, again an 
extended art card and this is my favorite one. Again, uh, if you want to check out the artist, she's called uh, Art of the Cards on Instagram. And then there's also the Soul Tiger, made by her as well. And then up here we have um, two more, which uh, these are not extended of course, these are usual cards. So we have uh, Sabog and Black Luster Soldier. I'm always trying to uh, put one in from each set that I that's in there, so that's why these are here. And down here we have some uh, Dark Revelation free packs. These are just, uh, again, to make it look a little bit nicer. Then there is um, the opened Ancient Sanctuary box with some boosters inside. And next to it we have the Invasion of Chaos box with some boosters again. Um, then I have some loose uh, IOC packs. It's the same as uh, I had on top. Again, these are just for uh, display purposes. And then over here we have uh, the reprint set. So got the uh, Dark Revelation 2. Below that we have Dark Revelation 1. Below that we have Dark Beginning 2. And then the one that was hardest to find, uh, Dark Beginning 1. I guess since uh, this contains the uh, reprints of LOB, people are uh, kind of buying that box. Then uh, down here we have an unlimited IOC box. On top of here, from the uh, latest Mayday video, we have the uh, first edition IOC box. Below that we have an first edition Ancient Sanctuary box. And down here, last but not least, we have another um, IOC Unlimited box and another Ancient Sanctuary Unlimited box. Alright, um, onto the left display. Uh, down here, there's another extended art card. I believe this is the last one I have, so uh, it's the Luster Dragon. Looks really cool as well. Then uh, there are some loose Magician's Force packs. Um, yeah, then let's start out with Dark Crisis over here. This is kind of crazy. Um, this is the open box with some reprint packs inside. Behind here on the top we have Skull Arch Fiend of Lightning Chilling. I'm looking to uh, put a Exodia League Cross in there, but I don't have a spare one. I only have the free ones in my binder and I don't want to take out one of these. Then all the way back here uh, on top we have the uh, first edition box from the latest Mayday. And now prepare for this. We have a 36 pack unlimited box. And we don't have just one, we have two, three, four. Here's number five, six, seven. And as you can see back here, there's also number eight. I'm kind of sorry for the glare on the boxes, but I have to use these lights because otherwise you wouldn't see anything. Um, yeah, so I have crazy uh, much uh, Dark Crisis boxes. Then over here we have an um, unlimited 24 pack Magician's Force box. Down below uh, one of the Holy Grace of my uh, collection being the 24 first edition box. Um, this one is in a display, as you can see, in a, what's it called, acrylic case. And I plan on having all my boxes in these cases. So I started uh, buying some of these and I'll uh, case my collection up over time. And up here we have the Dark Paladin Chilling. That's the corrected art version. Of course, not uh, first edition. Then uh, that's the 36 pack box I opened for the channel with some loose packs inside. And below that we have um, another 24 pack unlimited box. Another 24 pack unlimited box. And a 36 pack uh, unlimited box. And another 36 pack unlimited box. So um, Dark Christ and Magician's Force are like the only sets where I'm still looking for the 36 pack first edition boxes. So those are the only boxes that are kind of missing here. 
Okay, onto the third row, we have um, Faroni Guardian and Legacy of Darkness. Again, as with all the other sets, we have the two open boxes with some packs inside. These are the 36 pack ones we opened on the channel. Then um, we have a Lava Golem in here. Kind of um, one of my favorite cards from the set. And over here for Legacy of Darkness, we have um, the Dark Ruler Hadas. Um, on top of here, there are some uh, loose packs chilling, nothing special. And then for the boxes, we have a uh, first edition 24 pack Ferrari Guardian over here. Below that, we have um, a first edition 36 pack Ferrari Guardian. Below that, there is um, a 36 pack unlimited box. And below that, there is another 36 pack unlimited box. Then uh, on the left side, going to Legacy of Darkness, we have a 36 pack uh, first edition box. And all the way up here, there is um, a 24 first edition pack box. Below that, there are um, two more. So here we have another 24 first add and there's another 24 first add. For some reason, first edition Legacy of Darkness is not uh, very rare, so um, you could easily get this like till one year ago or so. Now they are more rare. Then we have um, a 36 pack first add box. Another 36 pack first add box. And below that there is another 36 pack first add box. All right, on to um, Labyrinth of Nightmare and Pharaoh's Servant. Yet again, um, the open boxes plus uh, loose packs. Then four cards, um, we have Jinso down here. Everyone's favorite from Pharaoh's Servant. Then on top of here, there is Dark Necrofair. That's my favorite card from Labyrinth of Nightmare. And another favorite card of me from um, Pharaoh's Servant is the Buster Blader. Uh, yeah, then I do have some loose packs sitting in here as well. I'm gonna take these out so I can show the boxes. Oh, and one fell down. Alright, so starting with Labyrinth of Nightmare, we have the uh, 24 pack first edition box. Below that, we have um, the 36 pack first edition box. See where I'm putting all of these. And below that there is um, a 24 unlimited box. Um, I think this is uh, one of the sets where I have least boxes of and I'm probably looking to buy one or two more. Then for Paris Servant um, over here we have a first edition 24 pack box. Down here we have um, a 36 pack unlimited box. Um, next up here we have another 24 pack uh, first edition box. Next um, the 36 pack box in first edition. And the last box down here is another um, unlimited 36 pack box. Alright, we're getting close to the end. Um, we're at the last row right here. So um, as you can see we have Magic Ruler and Metal Raiders up here. This is the 36 pack box I opened on the channel again. And here's the Metal Raiders. Oh, by the way, I didn't open the Metal Raiders box, we opened a, a Blister box. So um, I bought this box for cheap uh, from a guy online, so it was an empty box. It was just a couple bucks, and uh, since I had the open box from every other set, I wanted to have one from Metal Raiders as well. And for cards we have in here, we have the uh, Blue Eyes Tomb Dragon, the uh, Gate Guardian. The Serpent Knight Dragon, and up here there is uh, a Summon Skull. It's a pretty cool Metal Raiders cards. Then um, there's another uh, like first edition German pack Metal Raiders sitting up here that I, I don't even remember where this is from. 
And I also don't know if it's scaled or not since I don't have any packs to compare it with. Then um, for Spell Ruler over here we have the 24 pack uh, first edition box. This one is in a acrylic case as well, as you can see. Below that we have the first edition 36 pack box, also in an acrylic case. And in the back here we have um, a 36 pack box unlimited. And if you're wondering why I'm putting them uh, up that weirdly, these acrylic cases are really heavy and I don't want um, to put one of the acrylic cases on the uh, um, ca uh, boxes that are not in these cases. It would probably hurt them. There's another um, 36 pack unlimited box. And all the way back here there's another one. And then on the left side we have um, a Metal Riders first edition box. These are also getting kind of expensive. They are now where um, LOB was like one or two years ago. Then next we have an Unlimited Metal Riders. And below that there's another Unlimited Metal Riders box. Of course these didn't, didn't come in uh, 36 pack boxes so there's only 24 ones. Alright, and then last but not least, um, an entire compartment dedicated to um, LOB. Down here we have the uh, um, second print box that I opened on the channel with some uh, loose reprint packs. Then um, there are some uh, German first edition packs in here scattered. Um, I had these in a mail day uh, on my channel and these are all scaled, so there's nothing inside of there. So I'm putting them up for display. Then um, on top of here we have the Red Eyes Black Dragon and over here that you cannot really see on camera right now is the Blue Eyes White Dragon and I'm looking to put a Dark Magician in there as well so I have all the free pick monsters but I don't have an extra copy right now I'm waiting till I pull one or um, if I don't pull one at all I will buy one online. Then um, back here we have the uh, European First Edition box that you also saw in a May Day earlier. Same as on top of here, another first edition European box. These are the two that I have bought together. Then down here, we have a sealed uh, unlimited box. This one right here is a um, first edition Australian box. If you can read this right up here, it says for us New Zealand. I believe these are about uh, as much as the European boxes, maybe a little bit less when it comes to value. And behind here uh, in an acrylic case we have another unlimited box. And then last but not least the final box, this one is the Holy Grail of my collection, being the first print, first edition uh, North American box. Alright guys, that's it for the video. We now saw every single thing that's in my collection from uh, single cards to steel product. I hope you enjoyed. I know it was a long video and uh, props to the people who uh, watched the entire thing. I guess uh, many people skipped through. But anyways guys, um, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.